it's a pleasure to be here. So I will, um, I will uh, introduce Tor Medical and try to explain to you how we are enabling next generation uh, cancer treatment. So just a short uh, snapshot of the company. We uh, have an ambition to become a global leading supplier of alpha emitters for next generation cancer therapy. Um, we are addressing a very interesting market opportunity where we see a potential for us to take a, a billion dollar revenue uh, within the next decade. And we uh, are an emerging supplier of alpha emitters from the natural decay of thorium. That means basically talking about lead 212 and radium 224. And we are doing that based on a proprietary uh, separation technology that is currently patent pending, uh, where we are extracting radioactivity from natural thorium that is quite abundant in the world. So we are now uh, constructing and completing this month, actually, a pilot facility in uh, Norway, uh, one hour south of Oslo. Uh, we will produce products before the end of the year, and we will supply these products to uh, potential customers. That will be the radio pharmaceutical companies, such as uh, ArtBio, OncoInvent, um, Advanced Cell, leading companies in this field. Uh, and we are looking to scale up that production facility by the end of first quarter next year. So that will be the next, in a way, uh, investment milestone for us. We are based in Oslo, which is sort of like a radio pharmaceutical hub where there's uh, the likes of Art Bio. Uh, Bayer has its uh, radio pharma branch there, its own co-invent, and we have the Radium Hospital. Uh, and we have been working on this technology for almost 10 years. We started in 2015. We incorporated the company in 2017, and we are today listed on the main list of Oslo Stock Exchange. Uh, so I think radio pharma is becoming quite a hot topic, so people get start to get familiar with it. But just to explain the fundamental basic, uh, almost everyone that you meet will have some kind of affiliation with cancer. Uh, and in Norway, it is the leading cause of death, and radiotherapeutics is among the most promising and fastest growing options for treating cancer. And the idea is to take a radioactive element and attach it to a target-seeking molecule, which is illustrated here with the green uh, triangle, which finds the cancer cell, attaches itself to it, and then irradiates with the radioactive material and kills the cancer cell without damaging much of the healthy cells around the, the cancer cell. So we are not a a pharmaceutical company, we are a manufacturer of the radioactive compound that goes into the therapy. So we are not involved in, uh, in clinical development or clinical trials. We are supplying the raw material. A few highlights of the company of the last uh, 12 months. We have signed letters of intent with several leading radiopharmaceutical companies for supplying these radioisotopes. We are now in commercial discussions as we are planning to ramp up production to secure offtake uh, for that production. Uh, we are completing our pilot facility in, uh, in Norway this month, and we have all relevant authorizations in place to start manufacturing these products, uh, including uh, also trading of radionuclides and import and exports of these radionuclides. This is a picture of our vice president of EHS and regulatory affairs, Astrid Liland. She has She's a nuclear chemist uh, by education, but she has 20 years experience in the Norwegian Radiation Authority, which is very, very important for us in a way that we have license to operate. Uh, we have developed on the raw material side. We are dependent on having secure um, feedstock of natural thorium, and we have developed partnership on that uh, side, and we have um, signed an agreement with a partner in South Africa that has the largest concentration of thorium in the world, as far as we are aware, and we also have partners in Europe for the raw materials. And then I mentioned we have done a, a preliminary engineering study to see how much it takes to scale up production to commercial uh, scale. And that is in the range of $25 million. Uh, a, a holistic view to the radiotherapeutics market, it is projected to grow significantly in the time to come, uh, reaching close to $30 billion uh, within the next decade. Uh, and this is, of course, a very interesting opportunity for us. 
Uh, this is uh, uh, talking about a lot of different applications in terms of indications, but also in terms of, um, of uh, radioisotopes. But as I will come back to, we believe that the isotopes that we can supply will be a leading position in this field. And there is a very hot topic of radiopharma. Right now we are seeing all-time high uh, numbers of oncology trials. We are seeing uh, significant deals happening in the space. Big Pharma, Novartis, AstraZeneca, Eli Lilly acquiring early phase companies to make sure that they have a pipeline of radiopharmaceuticals. And we have seen $12 billion in acquisitions in the last 12 months. And there has been uh, more than a billion dollars in financing of these companies. And just yesterday, there was a big announcement that uh, a, another isotope supplier so producing a different kind of isotope than what we are doing. A Pantera in Belgium raised uh, $130 million uh, to scale up their production capacity. Uh, when we are talking about uh, radiopharmaceuticals, we tend to, to, to split between what we call beta-emitting uh, particles and alpha-emitting particles, where alpha-emitting um, particles has a higher energy density and it has a shorter path range. In other words, it doesn't, uh, the radiation goes, doesn't go as far and it has a, typically a shorter half-life than the betas. Historically, there has been a lot of development on betas, and we see that uh, going back some five, uh, ten years, this was, in a way, the leading um, uh, isotopes. But what is happening now is that alpha is getting more and more interest because of the properties of the isotopes, and now it has succeeded beta when it comes to clinical development. And if I go on, Within alpha, there are mainly two isotopes that people are talking about these days. It is actinium-225 and lead-212. Lead-212 has a half-life of 10 hours. That is very short. Actinium has 10 days. So it has been much easier to work with actinium um, in the value chain and getting the isotope into the patient. But if you look at the properties of these isotopes, I think a lot of people would agree with us that uh, lead-212 has the potential to be an ideal isotope due to um, the efficacy of the isotope, the low of target toxicity, and also the post-treatment considerations where, for example, the patient will be radioactive for some time and bio-waste from the person will have to be stored for 10 times the half-life of the isotope. So for actinium, that means 100 days of storage, while for lead, that means five days. Uh, so the question with lead has been how to get that into the patient, but this we are solving now between us uh, as a isotope supplier and our partners, that is the radio pharmaceutical companies, who have developed good solutions for getting the product in time to the patient. And now that we, there are examples showing that we can do this, then we also see that the numbers and the interest for lead is significantly picking up. And we believe it will become the leading isotope in the field of radio pharmacy. And also there has been a lot of interest uh, and a lot of um, challenges with shortage of actinium, because that cannot be produced from natural resources. That has to be manufactured artificially. Uh, and it has been uh, very high prices and very little supply for a long time, whereas lead can be produced from naturally occurring sources, and I think that eventually it will be quite abundant supply, including supply from Thorne Medical. And our addressable market, uh, we expect, will grow significantly. There is already now in clinical development a significant addressable market for us, with some hundred million dollars uh, just in the clinical trials. But once these products come through uh, clinical development and enters commercial stage, we see this uh, picking up into being a multi-billion dollar market. So here are also listed some of the leading companies in this field, and there are currently more than 15 assets in clinical development, and we see that that is increasing uh, quite significantly in recent times. So I our- I would just say, please, we need to wrap up in a very kind way, uh -huh. I'm afraid. So 
quickly on our process, we are working with natural thorium, and then we are extracting the radioactivity that is in the form of radium-228, and then we are purifying into thorium-228, which has a half-life of two years. It can easily be transported around the world. Uh, and then you can use that as generator material to produce the isotopes that goes into the patient. And that should be rather close to the patient. So we're building a value chain here. And we are an important uh, part of that value chain, working with the raw materials, producing the isotopes, and supplying the radio uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies with either thorium-228 or radium-224 or even lead-212, if it is in proximity to our um, operations. I just want to say also that uh, we have been working on this for 10 years. We are now piloting. We look to scale up to commercial production. That is what we refer to as fast track, to give the, the customers products for clinical trials. But that will just be a next step. We have to do more, because this, these are um, significant uh, amounts of patients that uh, is being targeted. And to be able to supply first 250,000 doses, and then eventually more than a million patient doses, that is what will have to be um, delivered for this to be uh, yeah, to meet the expectations of the customers. Okay, so. I, I'm sorry we need to uh, wrap up. Can I ask you at least one or two questions? Sure. Would that be okay? Because you aim to be best in class when it comes to environmental friendliness. Of course you think, how does that go together with um, radioactive waste? Well, I think, uh, first of all, our starting raw material is a byproduct of other uh, typically mining processes, which, which means that we are recycling the, the what would else be a actual uh, radioactive waste. And we, we produce very little waste ourselves as we are continuously reusing the raw material. We don't consume the raw material. The raw material we can infinitely reuse as the the radioactivity grows back into thorium, and then we harvest again, we put it in storage, and then we wait until the radioactivity is back. So compared to, for example, a nuclear reactor or accelerator, which is typically used to produce these isotopes, uh, we have a, in our view, much greener solution to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was interesting to listen to.